Welcome to Real Networking. One thing you'll notice right off the bat is I'm not your normal host. He has hair. But Mark was kind enough. He and Scott to launch the studio today. They're behind the scenes as we speak. But my name is Jeff McKissick. I'm a client here at Sync Lab Media. I'm a longtime friend of these guys. And I had a special guest visiting from out of town. And I, I asked him, I said, guys, he would be a great guest for the show. Is there any way we can slip him in? And they were gracious enough to allow us to use the set today. So, with that being said, our special guest today is Stan Walters, and Stan is visiting us from Tampa, Florida. I'm used yep. to saying Kentucky, but yep. we'll explain all that in a second. <laughs> but this gentleman truly is a celebrity in his own right, and we'll get more into his story here in a second. But as we typically do in our standard one-on-ones, time to get to know Stan a little bit. So, Stan. Good to see you again, my buddy. Hey, good good absolutely while. great to have you here in Dallas. Yep. So, Stan, where, first of all, where did you grow up? Grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh -huh. And uh, my dad was a Southern Baptist minister, so that's where I get my speaking side from. Ah. My mom was a nurse, so I couldn't cut school without an excuse. So <laughs> I didn't have a chance, right? <laughs> and uh, in 1976, I uh, married my wife, Hilda. We've been married 46 years. Wow. And she's, she's got me trained. I'm not screwing with anything. Oh, no, no, no. She's no. got me set up. Um, and, but has, she's been very supportive in my business and, and growing. Uh, in 1978, we moved over to the Lexington area. We had a farm Is there. Is that pre or post college? Or? Uh, yeah, it was post college. Okay. And then uh, when I was working at a bank, I actually went and got my master's degree at Eastern Kentucky University at the same time. So 40 hours at work and then getting the degree. And um, uh, about 2018, the girls are gone. I have two daughters, and my granddaughter wasn't riding. And here we got this 10 acre horse farm, and we were mowing pastures and tending horses. And <laughs> I shot an episode with Crime Watch Daily with Chris Hansen. And, and for those who don't know, just real fun. Chris Hansen, you probably know from a different show, To Catch a Predator. To Catch a Predator. Yeah. Right, right. So, okay, keep on going. So, so I shot a show with them and about a missing person case down in Tyler, Texas. Okay. Well, they did a B-roll when they, they walked out through my pasture. Well, I hadn't painted the fence. Uh-oh. And they showed my nasty fence on national television. And I caught the dickens for that one. But we decided, you know, 10 acres, this is going to kill one of us. <laughs> <laughs> There's too much mowing and fence and stuff. So we sold a farm, moved down to Tampa where Hilda's uh, sister and brother-in-law live, and my daughter, one of my daughters moved down. So we transitioned down to Florida in, in 2019. But, and you know how it is, the business works right out of your house, and right. you just keep right on going, keep following through. So grew up in Kentucky, now living in Florida, mm -hmm. went to college in Kentucky as yep. well. Uh, and talking about the kids, now you have two daughters. Yep. And you were, just, I saw something you posted online a couple weeks ago. Was it your grandson that recently graduated? A grandson graduated from high school, yep. And this week he is, uh, is since a little guy, he always wanted to be in the Army. Yeah. So he got his wish. He has finished his basic. He is now training for Airborne at Fort Benning. He'll get, oh. his, he'll get his jump wings sometime this week. Wow. So then they're going to ship him, <laughs> Kentucky kid, to Anchorage, Alaska. Culture it's shock. A, okay, it's a culture shock yes. coming, there, particularly when it comes to the weather. But he is just excited as I'll get out to, to be an airborne. It's what he's always lived and wanted to do. And, and you and I are both the same. What we do, we absolutely love it. And we get and you're excited to get up to work every morning. And not many people get to do no. what we enjoy the most right. in, in working with people. So that was definitely the Reader's Digest version <laughs> of the life. A couple of things we always kind of like to delve into hobbies, and I know Mark went way back when he interviewed me, so I'm going to throw some oh, things sure, at okay. you. One of the things, hobbies, interests, obviously I know you have a, a kindred spirit as I do with animals and dogs because mm -hmm. it's Dakota. Dakota, yep. How long have you had Dakota? He's German Dakota, Shepherd, right? German Shepherd, uh, let's see, to be 20, about six years now. Wow. You know, he's a rescue. And apparently was mistreated, and we gave him a home. Um, it, it's just that sweet soul that's there in the house always with you. And you know, when you fall yeah. and become one of the family, and you, oh, yeah. when we talk to our pets, the dogs and the horses, the vets look at us like, who, who, who are you talking to? To the horse? Okay, but mm -hmm. they just become, oh, absolutely. they're family to us. Absolutely. And, and we enjoy having them head dogs and cats through the farm and the horses, so, yep. Well, animals so, one point yep. of interest. Mm -hmm. Another point of common interest you and I have is an area of the martial arts. Yeah. And uh, tell <laughs> folks about your ex your current current <laughs> current. Yes, uh, I guess to take care of the frustration of being locked up from COVID, <laughs> <laughs> I need to get some frustration. <laughs> out. In uh, college, I trained for 
two or three years in college uh, in uh, Kenpo. Okay. Karate. Made it up to Greenbelt. Mm -hmm. Then got married and was over in the Lexington area in Lexington, Kentucky, and started taking Shaolin. Made it up to First Brown. Okay. But then life happened, business got going. But I've always enjoyed the martial arts. And so I found nearby, I had seen and read about Krav Maga and its concepts of highly adaptable. And it's a mixture of boxing and judo and jiu-jitsu and karate and kempo. And, and which, which, for one? those not watching, is an Israeli-based system. It's what most people learn in the Israeli military for their close-quarter combat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And started in Poland. Early, right before. I didn't know that. Well, yeah. Uh, Lev was teaching some of the Polish Jews how to resist some of the incursions oh, wow. of the Germans and anti-Jewish syndicates. I did not know that. On. And so I started taking Krav and just love it because it's so versatile. Yeah. And it'll be two years in August. I've managed to work up to level three instructor. I'll be testing for level four. There's level five and there's black belt. And that's my goal. And the best we can tell from records in the U.S. Krav Maga Association, I may be the oldest instructor in the U.S. Krav Maga Association. Well, if there's any doubt, we'll cut you in half and count and the rings. Count it twice. There you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I thoroughly enjoy it and, and enjoy it. Then, as an instructor, I get to do the thing I love the most again, is teach. Teach. Yeah. And, it, and you, for those of you who have not taught in your skill set, you never know it as well until you mm -hmm. share and explain it with someone else. Right. And by teaching other students in my interview interrogation work and in this, it just makes you better, and you're more knowledgeable, and you, you're able to express and spread concepts to people, and you love to see them grow at the same time, right. see them change. So always the teacher, always the instructor. Well, and of course, we're going to get more into the speaking aspect, but another point of interest, I think, for folks watching, you've been with the National Speakers Association for a number of years, but in mm -hmm. recent years, pre-COVID, of course, now what isn't pre-COVID, and we think about <laughs> in terms of time, because for two years the world stood still, but you had a couple of positions, mm -hmm. upper echelons within the National Speaker Association. Talk a little bit about your role yeah. there. Um, well, the first things that I did was I was the uh, editor or chairman of the editorial staff on the Speaker Magazine, okay. which was good, and then joined the writing side yeah. in finding other great speakers and writers who had messages to tell and finding hidden talent and then getting them into the Speaker Magazine that goes to our entire industry. Then I served as a chair on the Certified Speaking Professional Committee. And that's an earned designation that you have achieved a certain level of professionalism mm -hmm. and a certain number of presentations. And also feedback from clients that you've changed oh, wow. their, that's their cool. uh, culture and they've earned from it. And then I spent uh, four years on the board of directors for the National Speakers Association. Great way to learn strategic thinking. And it, it takes you from the tactical side, the logistics, to thinking beyond, okay, here we are today. Where do we want to be two years, four years, six years from now? Right. So the same thing you do with any business. Where do I want to be today? Mm -hmm. And what can we, can we be? And what can we grow to? And looking over the horizon for it. For mm -hmm. So in great fact, growth experience. I ran into a good friend of yours a couple of years ago in Vail, Colorado. I was speaking at a conference. And I come off the platform, a guy named Mark Sanborn. Oh, yes. Walks up to me, mm -hmm. who's the former president of the NSA. Mm -hmm. And we just started chatting afterwards, and I, I mentioned, you know, I knew a buddy who was on the board. He said, who's your friend? I said, Stan Walters. And he just started laughing. <laughs> He's like, Jeff, Stan, our families have taken vacations together. together. Yep. <laughs> so but even within a world like that, it's a very small world. Yep. Cue the Disney music. Yep. So just so many points of interest and entry. Mm -hmm. Other hobbies you have? that um, I hack around at fishing. Well, I, I drown worms. <laughs> But it, my brother-in-law, my brother-in-law is uh, several years older, and he's former Air Force. And okay. he has a macro generation and hearing issues, and his time being able to go out to the woods and fish is limited. And okay. our wives, her sisters, allow us the time together. We enjoy the fishing together. Movies, mm -hmm. and you know, I've had fun. Oh, yeah. It'll be, oh, yeah. We could do the themes of a lot of movies. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, the rest of the time, I enjoy just spending with my wife and my, my kids and when I'm not on the road, I'm not out playing golf. I'm spending the time with them to make sure that they have my presence, they have my full attention. Because if you, if you neglect them, then what have you got to, to work for, what have you got to live yeah. for? Well, and speaking of work, because that's the point of intrigue I think a mm -hmm. lot of people will find here, what is it exactly, Stan, that you do for a living? Now, you want my daughter's definition or you want mine? I want both. Okay. My daughter's is 
<laughs> when boyfriends ask, what's your daddy do? And they'll say, my daddy puts people in jail who lie. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll tell the boyfriends, tell him a story. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, I train particularly interview and interrogation tactics um, because decades ago when I first began investigations, nobody could explain it to me. You just talk to them. I said, you know, it's got to be more than talking. There's got to be some type of engagement going on. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be more than just a list of questions. And you have to make a connection. You have to understand the person because in their mind what they've done or what they're planning to do is perfectly legitimate. And, and you can't preach to them. You can't lecture them. You're not there to convert them. Your job is to collect the information. Mm -hmm. And then from victims, they need to know that you're hearing them. Yeah to validate their experience. And you have to have that empathy to do that, but then switch to maybe the person who's defrauded them or has burglarized their home or has defrauded them in insurance or an investment. Mm -hmm. And how do you change those gears like that? Um, I became fascinated with it because I didn't know how, and it, you teach yourself. Mm -hmm. I took several classes on behavior and body language and profiling, and I took a couple of classes from a CIA analyst on teaching human behavior, and it just kind of took off. And at one point I decided, wife fully supportive, said, sweetheart, I want to do this. And she said, well, I can tell you love it and you enjoy what you're doing, and you should be able to do what you love and get the feedback from it. So that's been 40 years now, since 1982 when I started. And predominantly you work with military, law enforcement, and our various intelligence agencies, right. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, international or more domestic? Uh, Bulk of it's been domestic, but I have worked in uh, Dubai with their state security and state uh, law enforcement, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Germany, uh, Singapore, uh, Amsterdam, uh, went to South Korea with the 8th Army, did work with them. It's, again, I love seeing them transform their skill set. Mm -hmm. And then as you and I both have talked about, getting those rewarding emails back, hey, Jeff, hey, Stan, I use this and I stopped this problem or I found these details or it worked. And I would get information back uh, from intel guys in theater in Afghanistan and Iraq that our troopers are doing a marvelous job. They will quote some of your teachings in their reports back to command. Wow. And that's when you think, you know, I, I may not be out there in the battlefield with them, but I give them the skill set. Yeah or out there on the street. They got that skill set to, to serve again. So I'm mean, serving through extension that way. And I've done Texas Rangers here, Texas DPS, uh, military. I've taught National Security Agency for 20, 23 years. Yeah, and you were just with the, was it CIA or DIA a couple of a weeks defense ago? Defense Intelligence, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Worked through their academy at Fort Jackson, um, Special Forces Group. During the middle of our Iraq and Afghanistan conflict, I was training all of their military intelligence, the human intel groups, mm -hmm. and battlefield surveillance brigades, and prepping them for in theater work. Right. And the critical part of that is a decision, where do we deploy troops, and how do we avoid putting personnel at risk from an unknown situation? And the same for serving victims with law enforcement. Um, and then making sure that the guys who done evil uh, are also held accountable for their acts and what they've done to victimize others. Now you've also been pulled in on several high profile cases over mm -hmm. the years that people watching probably would be familiar with. Mm -hmm. What are some of those that you've worked on there? Um, we happened to do training. Uh, my partner, business partner at the time was doing some work. We trained the at the Boulder PD. Mm -hmm. right, that was the Thanksgiving week before John Monet disappeared. And a lot of the work that winds up being network television, but there's also cases of wrongful conviction that I've worked on. Yeah. Um, if justice is going to work, then it has to work on both sides. Right. If, if we don't have an adversarial, adversarial system of defense and prosecution and they're not equally equipped, then the public and the victims are going to suffer. And so I'll see a case and I say, okay, this one is, the law enforcement did their job, mm -hmm. and I will defend that mm -hmm. because I can see what they did. But if we made a mistake, we've got to be big enough. If we made a mistake, how do we fix it? Right. And so I've uh, assisted a lot of those uh, on the, in, a, in the background. 
Um, and they asked, do we use your name? I said, no, I'm just an instrument. Your case, you use me as a tool to, to the solution. That's the way we work it. I don't have to have plaques and banners and parades for it. So, and as we're kind of wrapping this up, um, one of the things I, that obviously comes to my mind, you and I have had this discussion before, mm -hmm. obviously you have the bona fides working within the military, law enforcement, security intelligence agents, communities, mm -hmm. but I, my gosh, I see so many applications for what you do in the corporate world, mm -hmm. whether it's HR, whether it's risk management, whether it's insurance, whether mm -hmm. it's legal. And so if someone were out there and they're watching this program thinking, oh my gosh, he would be a great asset to our fill in the mm -hmm. blank, who would be a typical point of contact that would engage you or someone that you would primarily work with, maybe within a corporate setting, mm -hmm. more so than the more standard mm -hmm. fare? Done some work and had several opportunities to train uh, insurance special investigation units. Okay. Uh, and they're not, you've got a delicate balance there. You don't, you can't be hugely adversarial. You're still going to be a customer service based. Right. Or you're going to lose clients or, you get to, or give a bad name to the insurance right. company. Uh, did a lot of um, work with EPA and looking at EPA disasters and violations uh -huh. of code. Okay. Uh, for OSHA, for unemployment claims, for workman comps claims. Mm -hmm. And so anybody that, that you have to have complete, accurate information to make an informed decision, what should be the outcome with this client, whether it's with sure with employees accused of sexual harassment or internal theft mm -hmm. or uh, pro uh, work with a contracting group that would contract federal tr contracts. And they would have sometimes fraud and kickback within that system and, and price setting. So how do we track that and how we stop that abuse of the system? So if you're looking either like internal audit or inspector general's office or special investigations, uh, corporate investigations of, of uh, ethics violation, and it's a matter you've got to collect accurate information to make an informed decision to bring it to the right conclusion for all parties involved and still balance customer service along the way. So if, if they're out asking questions, then I can help you with that part efficiently and protect those rights on both sides of the council. And so if somebody does want to reach out to you, it's, mm -hmm. is it theligeyguide.com? Is the that the best com. way? Mm -hmm. And he has a registered trademark on that name, by the way, <laughs> so don't even think about going there. But is theligyguide.com, exactly the way you think it's spelled, mm -hmm. it's spelled that way. Mm -hmm. And so that's the best way for someone to reach out to mm -hmm. you? Yeah. They also have, uh, if you want a little taste of work, uh, academy.theligyguide.com. I have a little small online academy. Have a fairly large presence also on YouTube. Yeah, oh, yeah, YouTube channel. I can vouch for that. And yeah. so I've got like, like 10 or 12 minute little videos. So you can yeah, get a taste they're of great. They're great. They're so great. Just, and if you're up to your eyeballs and it, your hair's on fire, yours wouldn't be, but <laughs> somebody else's would be. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> but if your pants are on fire, you're, you're, you're up to your head, you know, in, in uh, button alligators, and it's the middle of the night and it's that bad, mm -hmm. I tell law enforcement, military, call me. And if I'm not home, Hilda knows how to get hold of me. Oh, of course she and does. And I'll be glad That's to help wife. you and give you some feedback. Yes. That'll help them out. Awesome. Okay, so we got to wrap it up. Unfortunately, I want to thank you guys for joining us on the show today. Again, this is Stan Walters, theliguy.com. If he could be an asset to you, your company, your corporation, your institution, whatever the case may be, please feel free to reach out to him because he has a wealth of expertise to bring to the table. This is Jeff McKissick on behalf of Sync Lab Media, wishing you all happy networking, and we'll see you on the next show. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>